Well here we are on Rittle Green um, Me and my old paint and friend John uh, He's just setting up He's getting his Getting his board all ready And uh, We're going to paint this scene Of the green here In Rittle um, Just pulling a little closer Because we probably will Get a little close so that's probably the view we'll be looking at um, but it's lovely green it's a bit dull at the moment temperature's meant to be quite strong later on so um, I think we best get set up we've got a bit of shade so let's see how it goes okay well we had a little bit of a shower so we've just pulled back under the tree but if I just hone in a little closer I think that's pretty much the composition that we're looking at and um, my mate John is uh, getting all these bits together still, so um, I'd better hurry up, otherwise he'll be halfway through before I've started filming properly. Okay, well what we're going to do, we're going to go straight in with the paint, basically. And uh, I'm going to use raw sienna, you could use uh, yellow okra if you want. And I'm going to put in the church. Now, if the church is going to be fairly high up and it's going to be off centre to the right so it's not dead centre slightly off centre to the right and the size of the church will determine the size of the rest of the buildings so we want a reasonable sized church um, so what I'm going to do I'm going to take a chance and I'm going to wash that all in so that we can see if you notice I'm not actually painting everything. I'm using a semi-dry brush just to give the so little touches of the white paper come through really. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. And then, once we've done that, we can then put in the cross section of the Tudor beamed building there. In actual fact, I may have to go up a little higher with that church. It's amazing once you get the church on, you can then see whether you're the right height or not, because I don't want to run out of space at the bottom. So that's the cross section. That brings everything up a little higher. Maybe some of these overhanging leafing can come in at the top, at the end. It's all a matter of balance, really. Um, balancing the, the scene out before you start. Now that um, that's going to be there. You can always make the church a bit higher later on. Uh, that's the roof of that part of the building. Quite a nice building. I like um, Rittle Green. It's uh, one of those quaint Essex villages. Right, so then we have that, yeah, that's pretty good. Right, now we're going to have to start really going for it now, I think, without um, being too fussy. Do you know I'm going to go up a little bit higher with that? That's really surprising me how high we need to go. We go good well that's gonna have to be that I'm gonna make John I'm gonna make that that tree in the center right? that tree in the center there I'm gonna make that very dark because then that will light the building up behind something like that yeah yeah just watch the angle of that yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's got the slope see that's almost straight almost straight yeah, that one there. Oh, right. right. It, at the moment, you've got your sloping, sloping down like that. Right. If you look at it, it's dead straight. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. Right. So we come down there. Now I'm just aligning the outside of the building now. So there's the gable. Um, that's that. 
so I'm not going to have a lot of green with mine. There is a tree there, like that. So that's the tree, and then I'm just going to gently put in um, the roof of the building there. That's red tile, so we'll we'll pop that in in red. Not very wide that one. And then we've got a grey tile. Well, we'll still um. Oh, it's got a gable. Nice gable end there. I think that's important we we put that in. But I'm do only doing the outline of that one purely because um, because of that um, gable end. That's it. Interesting little subject that. Good. And then we come down. to the foreground area. Good. I think that uh, more or less does it for the first indication of where we're going to lay everything. Well there's the scene and uh, this is the setup we've got this morning. Um, got the first washers down um, and John's still battling away with his. But I think basically we'll begin to get the basic uh, feel of the scene and um, yeah, it's come along quite well. The sky is the Still next area. The moment, so. Yes, it's, it's, and it's all very light. So I think what we'll do, we'll give it a little bit of interest, but not, notice how pinky it is in the distance. Yeah. See how it's, it's sort of crimson or... Um, a little crimson sort of feel yeah so what I'm going to do I'm going to damp the paper and work my way down around the church I'm going to leave the church un un uh, completely dry uh, just make certain we don't make that too wet that's it there you go now I'm going to use going to use a blue, um, not going to use ultramarine, use cerulean or you can use cobalt, it's not a bad blue to use and I'm going to just paint that in lightly to start with and if we lay it on nice and damp, wet washes then it keeps the paper damp as we paint, that's quite, um, quite an important feature Then, as I come down I'm going to use crimson or lizard crimson that's that ready sort of pinky red it's that nice pinky red that um, see that's nice and nice and weak now I'm going in with just a touch of the grey so it's cobalt it's cerulean with a little light red. I do notice that there's one or two little touches of grey within the sky. Like that. A little bit deep blue. Where do we want a deep blue there perhaps? Yep, just a little deep blue there. Other than that, a bit more light red now, a little bit more crimson in the lower part just begin to dry so what we do to one side of the towel we've got to do to the other because that way it holds it all together <coughs> good okay that's it yeah need to keep it really damp Just lift away a bit there, just to indicate some cloud work. There's just a little bit of wispy cloud about, but not too much. Just going to go in a little bit deeper with the with the crimson, 
in the lower area. A bit of deeper crimson there, just across the lower part of the sky. There we go. <coughs> now where the grass is coming, I'm going to use cadmium yellow and just stroke that across the grass area. Always nice to get the grass in a yellowy shade to start with. And then we just mop away those areas where it's running down and then we just allow that to dry. Right, that has completely dried and um, we've just had, uh, had a visit by a local resident which was all very enlightening. Um, now we're going to um, the next thing, I'm going to establish the Tudor Bean building. All right. So I'm going to put in the roof first. I'm going to use light red because that is, yeah, that's what you'd say, John. Yeah, light red and a reasonable tone. Not too dark, but not too light. So a mid-tone would suit that. Yeah. No, well, I've got that, John, but... Um, it needs to be a tone or two darker because that will dry up. That's about it. Yeah, yeah. Nice strong roof. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to raise it just a touch and to get that angle correct. And it passes the tower. Yeah. Passes the tower to there. Then we come down the gable end and we finish where the top of that roof comes across. Well, if you look at mine, John, I mean, I, I think I've more or less got mine pretty much there. And also the angle of the gable end as well. That's quite important. And I'm just putting the, an impression of the tiles running down the other side. There we go. And I think that does it for that gable end. And I'm going to sit the chimney on top. Yeah, that's the one. And I'm going to put a bit of burnt umber with it for the chimney. I know that chimney is lighter. It looks as if it's um, been re-bricked. Re, re um, but I'm going to make it a tad, tad darker. And that sits just the back of there. Like that. And like that. Of the chimney and we'll leave the chimney pots till later that'll do there you go that's it for the chimney pot doesn't matter if it runs in uh, but if it doesn't it still doesn't make any difference now I'm going to go lighter uh, for this area of roof it's not that light that's a bit too light there like that just to ring the changes because that's going to be go behind that dark tree which is coming in about there there we go and that is a little bit soft there and it finishes there like that and we put that in and we bring that across all the way down to that corner there there we are John I've been a little bit lighter with that because that then shows yeah yeah and then I'm going to soften that because that roof continues through but we lose it behind that tree so that's as good as we can get I think Yep. Now I think I've got the confidence to put the um, the church tower in. Now I'm going to put the brickwork for the buttress areas either side and the uh, castellations on the top. And I'm not going to be too fussy with that. But this is going to be there again a little darker. Because it's against the sky 
So I'm adding more burnt umber to the light red to try and make it just a little bit darker. That's it. Yep. It's looking good. Okay. In we go with that. And in we go with that. And we can just see one, two, three, like that. Just indicate those, uh, that top section. A little bit wider. We've got three, so we've got one in the middle, one there, and then the two uprights. And then just under that, we do have the buttress areas there. Not easy off. Um, struggled with these a time or two in the past when I've painted this before. So it's um, not the easiest things to depict, but on the other hand, it's not vital. It, it's only a suggestion of them. There we go. finishes there and of course this one finishes behind that tree again so all we need to do for that is just get a damp brush and just soften that and run that through because that's where it's going to uh, finish yep. that's good. Ooh, coming along quite uh, quite happily at the moment It's on, yeah, just pull it down. That's good. Now I'm putting a little alizarin with this. Same mix, but with a little alizarin for that roof there. And that goes into where that tree is anyway. And a little bit darker as it comes down. One side will be blended. Bring that through a little bit further. Just bring that through as far as I can see it. Because that other tree will lay over the top of that. So I'm putting that other roof in, John, just to give it a, a light red again. Yep. If you get a bit of running, it doesn't make any difference. But it'll all come together when we get shadows. That really is the shadows that, that make this. I'm going to use light red and ultramarine for the grey tile roof. That's it. No, I'm putting in the grey tile roof, John. So it's light red and a bit of ultramarine to go in there. Yep. Now I'm leaving a bit of a gap because we do have a ridge tile that's slightly red, which I always like to try and depict if I can. And that finishes there. And then we've got that gable end finishing there like that. That comes down there like that. And we get tucked underneath again. I'll put the red tile roof in on the top of that. Or the, um, I'll put in the, um, the red ridge tile. That's it. And do the same to the other side. And then I'm just dropping in the, a hint at the red ridge tile and that hopefully will blend in a little. There we go. Just give a bit of blend to that, um, that roof. Good, and there is just a very light gable end there. That is brick. And that just comes down like that. There we go. That's okay. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. 
yep, I think that's pretty much there, John, really. So we're gradually building up the scene um, without actually drawing. Now, I've overpainted where the gable area, uh, the, that um, roof um, window, the dormer. So all I'm going to do is just damp the paper and lift it off. So just lightly damp the paper. And just lift it away. You won't get back to the white paper, but that doesn't make any difference. Yeah, and I've just lifted off. You see where that dormer window is? I've gone over the dormer window with the red lens. <laughs> I've got um, so uh, interested in the red roof that. So, but I mean, it doesn't matter if it's got a little bit of a warm tint tint to it. Not over clean. Not over fussed about that. Brilliant. Looking good to me. That's it, John. You've got it. Yeah, your paper lifts off better than mine. Right. <coughs> now I'm going to start looking in the lower area, the area where um, the building sits on the ground. And we've got a wall. Um, nice red wall. Um, a little bit of alizarin going in with the light red for this. And it's going to be quite dark. And it finishes there. Somewhere about there. And runs along like that. I've added alizarin to that because it does help. Uh, alizarin with light red oh, right, okay. and then we've got a, brick pillar there, and another brick pillar there just trying to watch the size of that to make certain we get that somewhere near correct And it does slightly slope down, so uh, a lot of greenery there. Oh, and there's another. Put a bit of yellow with it now. Just keep ringing the changes, really, with the colours. Um, we've got another pillar there, like that, and another one there, which is just. I think there is a low wall attached to that, although there's a bit of greenery. So we'll, um, and I think I'm right in saying there's another, there is another couple of pillars there. Job to see because of the cars this morning. And then we've got that, here we are. Just roughly get that in. Look at that. And all of a sudden, the building has a bit of land to sit on, really. Well, we're coming along quite nicely. Scenes begin to come together. Okay, well, I've painted the um, tower, the centre part of the tower, uh, of the church um, using cobalt blue, raw sienna, light red, varying mixes, and also the castellations of the church as it goes away to the left. But of course, we do have that uh, some trees there, so I'm softening either side just so as um, they don't interfere too much with the church with the uh, with the dark tree that's going to be painted in later. Okay, well what I've done, I've, soft, I've damped the sky at the top, painted up into it. Yeah, just put a little bit more of the raw sienna in there. That's it. That's it. There we are. 
Not, I'd sooner it blue than, see how mine's yeah. quite dark blue, you know. Keep, keep it wet. Yeah, keep it, if it's all nice and wet. So I've damped the top, then I'm going to paint it in underneath, allowing soft edges. So let me show you how that is done. The same needs to happen this side to get those distant trees sitting in there very nicely. And then we go in with a, with a not too dark a green to start with. This green is going to be slightly different this side. So it may indicate that that's a little closer to us. Then plenty of blue as we paint around those buttress areas. And notice how when I paint up, it bleeds up into that dry, that damp area. And those buttress areas, I'm going to soften that in a, in a moment. So that's the way that you paint those distant trees. And I'm just going to go into the dry area there, just to ring the changes with that. There we go. And of course there's another dark tree coming up at the back. So that's going to be treated. So I'm going to soften that. So that's the way you produce distant trees. Damp the top to get a bit of softening. If you paint just into the damp area and let it bleed up you get a soft area if you go anywhere you go beyond that soft area you then go into a hard area again hard edge right well with a little bit more to do to the buildings before we start looking at the Tudor beams on the um, on the large gable end there I'm just going to paint the this brickwork, but I'm going to leave where the windows are. And that brickwork is just, I'm just picking up a bit of red, uh, light red. Uh, don't be too dominant with this. And we've got a, leave the white gable end to that. Then we've got a window there and a window that's us that window and then we've got two small side windows because that's like a bay really and then we come down a little way before we have another window and the same goes either side so really we're drawing as we paint rather than draw before we paint which is always a um, quite an interesting thing to do really um, tends to uh, sharpen up the senses in more ways than one um, and by learning to draw with the brush does you know just just so interesting There we are. So that's that frontage in. Going to add a little bit more light red. Just to ring the changes. Uh, do have a lot of greenery in the front of this. But there's another sort of part of that building there. Uh, there's a window there. Just about see that. So we may be covering that over later with a... Um, There's a window there and a window there, possibly there. And then there's a roof area there with another window. There's probably a doorway in the centre there, but we've got greenery, so we're not too concerned with that. That's it, and then just fill it in. Yep. Okay, well I've mixed, I'm using a much smaller brush now. That's it, yep, yeah, a bit like that, John. 
mixed up a burnt umber and yeah, ultramarine yeah. brilliant yeah and you need a brush at points then well you can count them but I'm not desperately uh, <laughs> into counting them um, and notice how I draw the, the brush across the paper fairly quickly because I want to indicate a little bit of light on on the um, on those beams. One there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. To give them an aged feel. Then this one, I've got to watch this one because I haven't any drawn to indicate how far down I go. But I'm going down to there and drawing that across. Paint that corner in. Then of course we have a lovely dark window there, which has, I would think, three sections. But that cannot be guaranteed because I can't see it. So that's it. Yeah. Nice and quick. Draw the brush across the paper. Nice and quick. That's why I'm using a smaller brush, so as it doesn't come up too, um, so it's more of a dense mix, and I can drag across the paper. Hopefully, get a little bit of um, indication of um, where the window is, and windows to go in later. And of course, we're coming down onto. Do we have any cross sections? Probably not. Windows will go in later. And just free and loose. You know, uh, I'm not really counting. And it's just as well because I'm way out of. Um, Correct numbers here, but I'm not counting, and I'm pulling that across as the gutter. Now, then we have a pillar down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring that right to the corner there. Just the corner. Yeah. Because that, that defines that corner, you see. Good, and we've got a beam that comes across there like that. It's the main beam. And then we've got cross sections. Well, let's put the window in underneath first. It's crucial that we get that, fairly crucial, we get that window in the right sort of place. But as I say, counting these beams is um, not really um, what I want to do. Once you start counting them, then you get a bit fussy. Um, It's just a suggestion, really, and that does save an awful lot of problems later on. We do have beams on this building there, so that sort of fits down the centre. These I probably can count because it's a bit easier. And there's two sections there. It takes a bit of working out, John. Uh, that window goes up into that. See that? So you've got to just... That's it. Yeah. It's all a matter of observation, which um, sometimes is uh, 
not easy to see. Well, I have this colour on the brush, um, which potentially is black. I'm going to paint in the diamond, or the it's more of a square shape of the clock. And we need to get this fairly central, fairly in the right position, pretty much. I think it's more of a square, really. So it's quite a large feature so that's the basically the outside then we have the dial in the center so let's get that in as a rounded shape and then fill in around the outside edges just gives us a bit of an indication that we're in the right on the right lines There we go. Then we can fill in the centre and I'm going to leave the hands because it's going to be four o'clock in the afternoon. And there's a reason for that. Because of the light. I'm going to depict this as if the sun is coming from the left instead of directly behind. How's it looking, John? Here we are. Perfect. And then you've got a window there. See where that window sits up into that gable? See where I've done that? So you've got a bit of beam in there around the window. Good. That's coming along nicely. John is well into the clock on the tower. Okay, well now we've got the beams in we can see where the windows are now basically I know the windows look very dark but my basic principle when I'm painting windows if it's a light frame the glazing's dark and if it's a dark frame the glazing is a little lighter right so what I'm going to do with these they're going to be lighter but those are going to be darker so I add more blue to the mix to that to that dark mix that we used so the, uh, the ultramarine and ultramarine and, the... and burnt umber and then blue. yeah yeah a bit more blue and then what i do take a little bit of moisture off the brush and just scratch down making certain that we're in the right area <laughs> <laughs> there we are, and that's the windows in. Yeah, a little bit too dark and all, John. A bit more blue and a bit more water. But of course, where we get the the light framed windows, we can go quite dark. Is that still too dark? No, that's just about right. I think if you just drag it across. You don't want it as dark as your beans. So take, take the... Yeah, see, see that there? You've got that, 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 that. And just drag it down across. Yeah, just, just in... yeah where the glazed areas are leaving. Yeah. That's it. Just depends how dark you are with your beams, really. You could go dark. You could go darker than the beams. Um, but, um, right. One, two, three, four. That's it. That'd be fine, John. Yep. That's one, two, one, two. And we've got one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. So we really need quite as simple as that. Then you can just sharpen the tops up to give 
and added depth to those windows. The more you play with them, the worse they get. Okay, well there's a large tree there. So what we're going to do, we've both decided we're going to put in Prussian blue with raw sienna to give us a nice sort of dark bluey green, but not too dark because we want to save one dark area for the front there, for that tree there. And what I'm going to do, it's open and it's like a conifer type. So what I'm going to do is drag on the brush to try and get that feeling of spiky outside edges. There you go. So we've got some openness to parts of it. Other parts are a little bit more solid. And then painting around the building. And that will show the shape of that building. And that chimney. Look at that. Just like magic, really. Bit, bit darker, John. And that extends right the way through to that. That's it. Yep. To make it darker, probably more blue, really, it helps. If you really want to make it dark, add a bit of burnt umber with it, and more blue, because that will give you real depth. And I've actually done that a little. There. And a little there. Don't want too much of that really dark but it's nice just to hold in that right hand side. And this is where you get the benefit of painting dark areas. There is an artist that I follow quite a lot, Jem Bowden, and he does write in Leisure Painter. I think you've, heard, you've seen his work, John? Yeah, and he's tonal, he's tonal. He doesn't use a lot of colour, but he uses a lot of time. Yeah? Yeah, now come down to the left hand side, there. And then what I'm going to do, John, I'm going to finish with an area where I'm going to have my tree coming. And all will be revealed on that later. There you go. That looks pretty good, John. What do you reckon to that? Yeah, I, I don't know. Let's have a look. Is that the pressure? Well, I've just teased in the tops of um, of those um, pillars, and uh, just to give a little bit of a uh, top to them, they are 
already there. Now we're going to look at some greenery that actually sits behind and on top of that wall. Now this is where we need some nice green colour. So I'm going to use Prussian blue with cadmium yellow. And enough cadmium to give it a nice rich green. Sorry, and what? Uh, cadmium yellow with a touch of Prussian. We don't need too much Prussian, otherwise, as I've found when I'm mixing here, it's gone a bit. There we are, a bit more yellow in there. Good. And it's quite dark, and it sits on the top of that. And I'm just running it across like that. Then as I, get, as I go along, I'm adding a little bit of brown to it. And then a little bit more yellow. Just to try and bring the changes a little. So that we end up with quite a nice arrangement of greenery that's actually in front of that. There you go. Pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, it's still a bit to do. And of course, we mustn't make it too dark. So, lightening up in places. It's a bit more of a formal hedge, but I'm making mine a little bit informal, really. A bit of brown, too, going in. And that, actually, that one hangs over the, the little wall there, actually. Then we've got another quite a yellow green here like a, a lighter shrub affair there yeah if you want to darken it you can always add a little bit more paint it's um and what i'm doing now i'm adding red to that the alizarin because there's like a purpley tree a purpley red and that is standing up there so a little bit of red to that helps to give that, that purple like effect a bit more green again for that area there and then We've got that lovely green area there. Quite yellowy green now. And if we come up into that, what was the lighter? with the white paper then all of a sudden it shows lighter against that dark background green there we go and that pretty much does it for the greenery in front of the cottages Looking good, John. Looking good. Gradually picking up the uh, shape of everything. A little bit of tree work to go in next, John, I think. Yeah, it's good tree this side. Yeah, I think we'll get that one in first. I think we'll get that right hand tree in first. In there, yeah, and the centre one in afterwards. Brilliant.
Okay, well, this is probably the bit more difficult part of the painting, really, uh, putting the tree work in. And I'm going to use cadmium yellow and a touch of Prussian blue, very little to start with. And then I'm going to use burnt umber and burnt sienna. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off using the side of the brush to get rid of the fly and but yeah get rid of the fly and paint across and down like that it's quite a dense tree then i'm going to leave where the lighter tree will come in there so that's basically the principle of the whole thing This should be a much more brilliant green than we've had before because we're, we're talking about a tree that's somewhat nearer to us. And I'm leaving an uneven edge for the tree that's coming in on the right there. There we go. And of course, as we head towards the lower part of the tree, it gets darker because it's in semi shadow. So I'm adding a little bit more, just painting up, trying to get a little bit more texture and a little darker where that lighter tree will actually come on that outside edge there. And then gradually work them away down. And that is going to overlap. with a considerably dark tone that light building just like that there we go that's it and, and over paint the distant trees in the background because that way you'll get um, and of course as you head down towards the lower area allowing for some of that other tree to actually um, come through and we're more or less covering over the corner of that building but don't cover too much of that and then right at the base of it we are very dark so it's just blue and burnt sienna to get that really dark tone hanging there like that. Then, of course, we just need burnt umber. Now, let's go burnt sienna with that. So plenty of blue to create the trunk. And I can just see that trunk sitting there I'm not sure where it's sitting but it's somewhere in that sort of position and then I'm going to soften it where it sits into the potentially the grass area the road wherever it sits just soften where it sits and then to the right of that we're going to light a tree so we clean the brush just use cadmium yellow almost considerably lighter and that cadmium yellow Prussian blue a bit more yellow and I'm leaving one or two little touches unpainted because that's where you'll see the sparkle of the sun just coming through that uh, tree All right. and that's the way you treat these simple trees that are coming in on the left hand on the right hand side okay painting the large tree that sits in the center there well with the sun coming towards us we can see the outer edge is very light, but I want to depict 
later in the afternoon when the sun comes from the right because I want some shadow in the foreground shadows on the buildings so I'm making the right hand side light but then as I work round to the left and the lower part that's going to be very dark so that's the basic print so we've still got the film see the way the light comes to the top there and then that's dark so that justifies the shadow so um, now I should use a large brush for this um, but I'm going to use a slightly smaller than I would have done um, because I want to try and pick up a little bit of texture but I need to work very very fast so I'm using cadmium yellow to get the lighter touches of the tree and I'm going in I'm just looking at the parameters of it I need to bring it there it needs to be up there somewhere around that sort of area so let's just bang that in for a start pick up a little bit more yellow that's it yeah almost neat paint that should work quite well just trying to get a balance for this tree it's quite a dome shape there go and I'm using a bit of burnt sienna now and that will have the effect of darkening in some places right now we can start going dark more blue more brown and then all of a sudden on the undersides of some of those branches like that, undersides of some of those branches and all of a sudden it starts to get a little bit more open and darker. Now in many ways we can't go too dark with this but I've said that before and it's all gone pear shaped. So I've used burnt umber now with Prussian blue and that you get a real dark colour. So I'm trying to maintain the light on the top with the dark colour. Then I'm adding a bit of red to that because that will darken it even more. A bit of alizarin. So this is the real dark left hand side. Coming into the right a touch but not too much. On the undersides of the branches, like that. See where it's really dark, John? Yeah. Really picked up that dark, and that's a bit of a dome to it. Just going to go a little bit lighter, just to start with in the lower area. Not too light. Oh, there's quite a jagged edge coming off there. So I'll do that in a moment. A bit lighter perhaps there before I go dark again. Right, now we go really dark again. Burnt umber, ultramarine, um, Prussian blue, bit of red. Now this is more like um, painting with a more like acrylic painting really because that's um and there is I can just see some spiky pieces coming out from there there we go and then this then spikes out down here leaving one or two of them little lighter areas and that will be my trunk uh, does that stand in, in front? I suppose so. Yeah, right. That's where I'm putting it, John. There we go. Brilliant. I think that. Bit of the trunk scene there. Bit of the trunk scene there. And two little bits 
throwing up there. But other than that, all it really needs now is good quality shadows. Okay, well that's that large tree in and we've both been pretty successful with that. Now we've just got one or two final finishing touches. The main thing is the shadow. We need to put a bit more, um, don't want too much light on this grass actually looking at it. Uh, it can almost be left as it is but I will put a bit of colour on. Then we've got the flagpole and then shadows and we're there. Um, I'm going to run a little more cadmium yellow onto this grass and I'm going to leave some gaps there we are it really is just a matter of banging a bit of texture onto that just before we go in with any shadow That's going to do it for that foreground area. Don't want to be too dark with that because we have shadow coming over that area. Okay, well, that's all in now foreground's laid on we're just going to put the flagpole in with an indication of a flag of some sort and we do need a brush that points well because we don't want to make a thick flagpole um, and for that I'm going to use ultramarine with a touch not too much just a touch of burnt umber it is a black, it's a white flagpole, but against the sky it will appear quite, quite dark. Don't, yep, there we go. And positioning of that just about there. So that's painted in quite successfully. Then, I'm going to put in the flag itself. And to do that, I'm adding a bit of red with that to give it a warm, a bit of a warm glow. And it's a bit of a knack with the um, flags, which I've yet to develop properly. But um, that probably is about the sort of thing that I would suggest is sufficient I think just to indicate a little bit of breeze in the air a bit of movement okay now the all-important shadows. Okay, all-important shadows to go in using a, a large, long rigger, thick rigger for the smaller detailed shadows and then I'll use the larger one for any that run across the foreground. Now where are they? Well, we, we, the, the time I'm depicting this is when the sun is coming across on the right so I've got to really imagine a lot of the shadow work. the main thing is the colour used well I'm going to use ultramarine with olizarin crimson Let's try that anyway see how that works out okay okay Put a bit of yellow with it if it's come up a little bit green, a little bit um, sort of too brilliant. Okay, that's that's fine. Now the first colour I'm going to use 
is fairly strong because bit more blue. A bit more blue, John. Yeah, that's it. A bit more blue. Just keep putting that in because you'll need plenty. Yeah, a bit more blue. Just keep banging the blue in. Scrape that out the bottom. <laughs> All right. Could use any other blue really. That wouldn't matter if you need a bit more blue. And I think we can just about see, because we're slightly off centre to the left, I think we can just about see the side of that area there. Just about to see a buttress coming out. Like that. And that heads down there. So that is the shadow side of the tower of the church. Oh, oh and there's another bit, bit of a buttress there sticking out. So that gives shadow to the left hand side of the tower. Then of course these areas will have shadow just banged in. Like that. A little bit of lining underneath there, probably a bit of shadow. We have a little bit of shadow there. We have a little bit of shadow there, tag there. Then I'm adding more blue because we have a nice soft shadow running across there. Down there, like that, a little bit below that, and then that goes out to there. And that tells us that that part of the church stands away from the wall. Sloping at an angle. Yeah, come out a little bit more because you've got that. Then you've got another little bit that comes out here. Just, just make it so it doesn't look just like a line because if it's just like a line, it's um, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that all come together when we get the rest of the the left hand side of the chimney pots and the left hand side of the chimney itself and that then slightly straddles and what I'm going to do here I'm going to make this in shadow so I'm going to paint that into shadow and that straddles that that comes down like that there we are. So that's going to be shadow then. It is all about shadow work with these subjects. There we are. That's it, John. Yep. Bit more alizarin now going in to get a slightly purpler, more purple colour. There will be a bit of overhang shadow down there, I think. There will be a nice casting shadow underneath there. Like What's it looking like, John? That then casts across there. Goes 
down there like that. Look at that. Slightly purpley shadow. Then there's a nice deep shadow under there that comes at an angle, and then this would be at an angle. So we're really making it up as we go along because we can't see that shadow, but I think that's how it would be. No, I think you can safely say that you're on the right lines there. Those buttress areas are likely to be in shadow, John. So I'm painting those dark. All very interesting this. If we can get these shadows somewhere near the right, then we're on to well I'd class as a winner. Perfect. Windows take a little bit of shadow. Take some shadow then across there, that down those window reveals. All very impressionist. That's what we're looking to achieve. And yes, there will be a shadow down there. Of course, that would then cast onto there a tad. Just appear a little wider. Okay, we will just put a tad under there. And then these windows will have a bit of shadow in the reveals that's a jump, nice and fresh Ooh. looks pretty good to me
Now I'm going to add Prussian to that with cadmium yellow. Then I'm going to use a larger brush to slightly damp the paper with that paint. Then I'm going to sweep that in clear relief Trying to leave just some little touches of that. Because that gives it a late afternoon sun effect. I would have thought. Would have thought that probably does. Soften that a little bit. And then run that through there. Then I'm going to put a little bit this side. Sorry, what have you done? I've added Prussian to that, John. Prussian to what? Uh, Prussian to the mix you've already got. Yes. Well, it may need to, that's it, yeah. Then a bit of cadmium. And that gives you a nice sort of bluey green. I'm just melting that in on this left hand side as well. And then softening where necessary. Putting one or two little touches in here and there uh, of this shadow to try and um, just lose that corner. Don't want the eye to be led towards that. It's all about that front area there. Let that go right the way out with that John, so that it doesn't have any light coming in from the right. Good, so we're almost there. Going to go in with some really dark stuff now with the point of the brush and burnt umber. Oh, and a little ultramarine because this is where um, you sort of tighten everything up, really. Create a, a shadowed effect from where the Pillars are, a bit of shadow effect there. Um, a bit of a clear definition of an underside there. Um, Got to watch we don't go too far with this because we're going to sort of overdo it. Putting in a little bit of hinting at guttering there. Hinting at the guttering. There. I think that gutter runs right the way across. So that needs to be put in. And there is a downpipe there. So we'll put that in. And I've got a feeling there's a downpipe under there, but I don't know quite whether to bang that in or not. Uh, I haven't really made my mind up yet. May be a good idea, it helps sharpen up the cor corner of that building. There we are. And I've just spotted I need some shadow in this left hand side there. That's the corner of that building shadowed out. Good. We'll allow that to dry. Just some tidying up to be done. Um, I 
before this green there. It should be quite just a little dark areas on the undersides here and there. Bit of shadow work because that will indicate that that greenery is in shadow. Take a bit off the brush for doing this one so as it's not too clearly defined. But generally, this has been quite an interesting exercise. Darker there, just to hold in that left hand side. Let's check that's dry, yes. Just to line up a little area here. Quite often you get some little edges where the grass meets that area. So where the grass is standing up. It's all a matter of what I'd call those little fiddly bits that um, just sort of um, what they are well we don't really know let's put a gate on here it's like the idea of a gate there we are, a little gate put on shall we have another one here? there must be one, yeah there is There we are, gate put in, and finally some little touches along the edge there so we can see where the grass finishes and the wall begins. Okay, let's sit back and analyse what we've done. And just continue with those finishing little touches really. Put a couple of silhouetted figures to the right there just to take off that white colour. Um, I have just got one or two other little bits and pieces to do. Um, just going to do a bit of lining for the bit of red tile lining. So it's dark brown really. Um, for the edge of that there. Oh, that's a good thing to do to show a bit of overlap of tile work down that gable end underneath there helps to sharpen that quite sharpen it all up really but other than that we're sort of well that's class as um, pretty much um, Finished really. Ridge tiling at the top. I don't think you do, John. I think yours is very sweet. I think it's just time to sit back and uh, reflect on them. what we've got really you know um, so easy to um, overdo the, um, the situation as I've done many times A secondary wash of colour will go in now into just to, just to give a little bit of 
bring the changes a bit. Just feel we could do with a secondary bit of grey into the stonework here. It's got to be near it, John. It's got to be near it. We can't keep on doing anything to this, can we? Without spoiling it, surely. As I say, continually to work. That's it, John. I like the day. Yep. Got to have it, didn't you? Good. Well, I think that is getting there now. We'll take the surround off and see what we've got. Okay, well it's getting rather hot here now under this tree. And um, that's the scene. John is gradually getting towards the end of his rendition of this subject. Which, um, it's all looking very, very good. Um, brilliant pieces of work. Well there's the finished painting in the dappled light under this tree and um, all it needs now is signing. So I'm going to all sign your work. Actually sign it in the paint. Brilliant. There you go. So that's the uh, my finished painting. John's just finishing his edges off and I'll pan around there in a second. Um, lovely view of uh, cottages on Rittle Green uh, in Essex just outside Chelmsford for those of you that are not sure where it is and um, just like the idea of that church obviously the sun is behind the church tower now but we have both depicted it as if the sun is later this afternoon coming around on the right hand side. So like late afternoon, early evening sort of um, session. So um, I think it's worked out quite well. The balance is quite good. We've got a dark tree in the centre, um, a couple of decent gable ends which always helps. And now I'm going to move across to John's work, same view, uh, very well handled as you can see, um, nice bit of shadow work, nice fresh feel, that's what we're looking for really in watercolour painting. Well I hope you've enjoyed that video watching me and uh, John paint and um, stay tuned because no doubt John will join me again on another session painting somewhere, sometime, someplace. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel. If you want to see any work for sale, visit my website, colinsteedart.com. Happy painting. <laughs>